animals are usually a normal part for us of the Christmas story. Mary rode a donkey as she and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem in order to be counted for the census. And then when the time came for the Savior of the world to be born, his delivery room was a stable or a grotto filled with animals. But have you ever thought about the role that animals play in this last and most important week in the life of Jesus before he would die on the cross, Holy Week as we know it. Animals are interspersed throughout the events of this final week where Jesus becomes our Savior. Jesus entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, riding on the colt of a donkey. Our Gospel lesson today from Mark just calls it a colt, but the other Gospels remind us that it's a colt or a, or a baby male of a donkey. And this fits the scriptural prophecies, because throughout scripture, donkeys were often used to signify the coming of someone important. And as a matter of fact, at the time of Jesus, there was an ancient Eastern tradition that said that the donkey was an animal that symbolized peace as opposed to the horse, which was a symbol of war. And so then, we have, as the Passion reading moves on, and as Jesus begins to prepare the apostles for this devastating event that's about to happen in their lives, he talks about how they will feel like sheep without a shepherd. And it's intentional on the part of Jesus because, as you know, throughout his ministry and his teaching, Jesus often talked about the relationship between God and man as a relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. And the good shepherd comes to lay down his life and protect his sheep. So why wouldn't Jesus invoke that image again at this most crucial hour? But as he invokes the image, it reminds them of the chaos that will surround them at his death, that they will feel as though they are leaderless and have no direction. But the most devastating animal in the Passion reading is when the cock crows the second time, reminding Peter of Peter's sin and Peter's failure. There were two traditional times in Jesus' day, Jesus days when the cock would crow. It would first crow after the sun went down at night, and then it would crow again in the morning as the sun was coming up again. So this was a process of denial that went on through the evening for Peter. And as that sound of the cock crowing was heard, it was a reminder of how sin brings the counting down of time in our lives, leading us to death. And it was a terrible moment of failure. Forty years ago, in 1978, one of the most popular comedies of all time was released, Animal House. It starred John Belushi and a bunch of other actors who went on to great fame after the movie. The movie was so successful because it only cost $2.8 million to make, and to this day it's grossed over $140 million. And it tells the story, if you remember of these fraternity college students who are standing up against the abuse of authority and unrealistic expectations in their lives. And the tagline that sold the movie was, it was Delta against the rules. The rules lost. And since that day, anytime there's been this chaos that's come to authority or leadership or the things that we expect to be normal in our lives, it's often been used to refer to them as an animal house. What's going on here? Is this an animal house? And it's, I think, an appropriate notion and thought as we gather together here at the beginning of Holy Week to realize that we kind of live in a world and our Savior has to come into this world that often seems like an animal house. Uh, chaos seems to reign among the those in authority and leadership that we have, there is this constant unrealistic expectation that surrounds us and oftentimes we are disappointed when things don't live up to those expectations and there is the constant struggle of injustice and the abuse of power that surrounds us. It feels sometimes like we're surrounded by an animal house. And how appropriate is it 
that in this final week of our law of Jesus' life, this most important week of our lives as the people of God, that just as animals played such a role in welcoming the Savior into the world, that animals would remind us of the love of the gods, our creator, for his creation, and play a role in announcing this great moment of God's love. For it is the most precious animal of all that Jesus symbolizes as he journeys to the cross, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. As Jesus was being baptized, as you remember, by John the Baptist, John pointed to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And there is often a deep connection, and the connection is often in time on our calendar between Passover and Easter as Passover will happen on Friday, Good Friday, because of that connection to the Lamb. If you remember, Passover remembers how it was the blood of the Lamb placed upon the doorposts that freed the Israelites from their slavery at the hands of the Egyptians. And throughout his ministry, Jesus pointed to that Lamb and the many other sacrificial lambs that are found in Scripture to point to himself, what it meant for him to be the Savior. And that's what Holy Week is for us. It points us to how Jesus becomes our Lamb of sacrifice. And every time we gather here in these gifts of the church, not just during Holy Week, but every time, we are coming to meet the precious Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he comes to us to bring calm to the chaos of our lives.